<laughs> Oops, wrong oh, yeah. transition again. Whoa. Oh, blow it away. <laughs> blow it away. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I forgot to change that. <laughs> oh, you weren't here last week, Ben. <laughs> Sorry, you couldn't see that, Wesley. I had the same reaction as you. <laughs> This podcast is literally on. Did fire. I break him already? <laughs> yeah, so funny. awesome. I'm Matt. That's Ben, and that's Aaron. And we're joined by Colin and Wesley on the phone. Hey, Wesley. Oh, there he is. Hey, so. I like the Victor Oladipo back there. I think there. Wesley's too cool yeah. for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I, I didn't do anything. Hey, there's another Colin there. There's a dog behind you. But there's Colin, and then our other friend Colin. <laughs> this is Charlie. So yeah, it's Charlie. So cut back to Colin. Colin, and then cut back to Matt. There's another Colin right there. There's Colin. <laughs> <laughs> and cut back to Colin again. <laughs> and then Colin. And then I made hey, Colin brothers everywhere. Yeah, Colin's probably. brother Roland. Roland. <laughs> Dog's uh, like, you, a do, dog. is this a show? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Does he have a strong opinions about Jojo Rabbit? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a dog's purpose was a fantastic. A dog's purpose. Yeah. Sure like yeah. Did you guys see the art of racing in the rain? Oh my god! <laughs> Get this dog off me. You really like John me. Wick three? Oh god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I saw fox catchers. <laughs> there were no foxes being caught. I have all to right, say. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> what the hell are we doing here? I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've totally lost the track. So Colin, we have hey. no, 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 no. Cut back to me. So Colin. And then, um, Colin, both of you, Doctor hey, Colin. Colin, there you go. <laughs> All right, we're done. It, it's yeah. not working. It's <laughs> we've got so we've got Colin, we brought Colin and Wesley on, back on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna cut this. I don't know. It's gonna be. I keep trying to reset, and then you no, do no, something no, crazy. Don't, don't even bother. <laughs> We brought Colin and Wesley on to do a, a, a five-man podcast because we're doing our. our we're going to start off this week, uh, leading into the Oscars, with a year-in review for 2019, all the movies we saw, um, and some of us have seen more than others. And we're going to do Oscars predictions later. Um, Wait, this isn't a Super Bowl show? Uh, no, sorry, you can leave. I guess <sighs> I'll kick I you from here. All, all, all my all my prep is. This is right. wasted. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all those Andy Reid hot takes, just throw them yeah, away. Know, um, no, you so Andy Reid's hot pockets. <laughs> yeah, Andy Reid's hot pockets. Um, <laughs> he could use, you know, well, it's Groundhog not, Day yeah. he's, again. He's looking yeah. good, guys. He lost. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> God damn it, you guys! <laughs> <laughs> I so we've all seen a just like last year. Uh, we kind of did an intro to our Oscars picks. I'm curious because we're all at different levels of how many movies we saw literally from 2019. So do we want to go around? Do you feel like you saw more or less movies in the past year than you normally would? I can tell you right now, I saw the fewest movies I've seen in many years this year. Mm -hmm. Me too. I was not interested in most of them. Me too. Yeah. So last year, what was, what were the Oscar nomination best pictures? He doesn't have so notes for that. Last year was sh the Shape of Water year, right? Mm. That wasn't that 2017. Uh, no, last year was Bohemian no. Rhapsody. Yeah, okay. right. That didn't win. No, Green Book. Green Book won last Green year. Book. Green Book, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but so that I was still the saw Rhapsody some movies. Year. But like, so the year before that, I saw all the best pictures. Yeah, because we did it for we the did show. it, and then yeah. I saw some of the best pictures, and I, I don't really. Mm. Well, and I think I've seen one. How many? I've definitely <laughs> seen less. Been, also, you've seen less than you normally have. Yeah, normally. Wesley, what about you? I did not hear the question. You were all talking at once. How many? Do you feel like wow. you saw more wow. or less movies this year? Oh, way less, man. Way less. I barely got to do jack shit this year. You're but I saw all the good ones. Ages 16 and up. You're, yeah. gl you're glitching. <laughs> glitching. So yeah. I ended up seeing no the money. same amount as I normally would. Um, was it 60? It was 60 this year. Last year I saw, I think, 60. You saw 60 two. movies this year? Mm -hmm. That came out. Oh I saw my them gosh. over the course of 12 months, but yeah. Wow. I probably saw like. Six. <laughs> Six. Yes. <laughs> Maybe that's probably too much. When we say when we say saw movies, we mean new movies, right? Like in theaters. New, right. I, didn't I watched go to way them all more in than theaters. six movies Netflix total. As well, so. Netflix streaming, 
catch them after the fact. Then I saw a lot yeah. of movies. No, but well, they were old. But then, no, yeah, I mean, I they, old movies. I'm talking about. I saw 60 movies that were released in the calendar year 2019 for the that are part of the Oscar would be qualified wow. for this year's Oscars. Hmm. I saw a lot That's of movies. I saw. Old movies. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I saw <laughs> movies this year that I forgot were this year. Oh, I did too. Yeah, like glass, I agree. Glass feels yeah. like last year. Yeah, yeah. I thought I well, saw, last I saw some movies that I was like, "Wow, that came out." Captain Marvel last year. feels like three years ago. I'm yeah, sure. that's it does. that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, Captain Marvel. I thought oh, that I was 2017. That forever ago. I'm with yeah. her. <laughs> <laughs> so, for for you guys at least, for of the ones you saw, was there any kind of like big take? Were, were these only disappointment. Better, better, worse than previous years, or was it kind? Of, or did you were you more focused? Year. No, it wasn't. We I, haven't had a good year, year since seventeen. No, this is a pretty good movie year. So nah. why do you, Aaron? Why do you or not Aaron Wesley? Why do you say that? Um, I I think we we had the opportunity to see a lot of people that have been stuck in the franchise machine make non franchise movies. Um, like do both little. actors and directors who. Do little, like Doctor Doolittle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm speaking specifically. Finally, there to some like art. Jojo Rabbit and Knives Out, but yeah, uh, and Sam Mendes, 1917, like making original. Yeah, uh, and just Adam Driver. Yeah, but you know what? 1917 it. already happened. Yeah, it's in the past. It's in the past. The Great War. <laughs> um, I, I would have to say art is starting to come back into cinema, which. I'm really hoping keeps on happening. It won't. That these popcorn, yeah, these popcorn films are nope. making money because they know they can turn it over to the international and make. make well, look at 1917. Yeah, it's probably going to win, you know, best picture, whatever. Always bet on a war but movie. It's not making any money. They're not making it money. Made, it, it made okay. decent it money. Made okay. Yeah, but it, they're not. I mean, like for more, like it's not joke. That's money. not so. Yeah, yeah. it's not. That's well, not a great I mean, example though because they dual released that. It didn't actually get released fully until this this year so like uh, while the money still counts for last year people thought that they had uh, they just didn't have the opportunity to see it so they moved on to the next thing if they had released it wide on christmas i think you've had a better result and in the big box office uh a money maker only has one nominee this year too it which is uh in game oh yeah so it's that like, feels like five years ago yeah, so it's like, what? what's that about, you and, know? I mean, I think, I mean, just from, I think the biggest surprise this year was, I would say, Joker. I think that was from, <laughs> from I a, knew right away. From a, from a, uh, not just from a critical standpoint of how people perceive the film. Obviously, it's still extremely polarizing, but the amount of money it made, I think, is pretty surprising given what, the movie ended up being it wasn't yeah, it, wasn't, the, it was an r-rated yeah, and superhero it, movie and that's it, pretty dark at and times it was kind of its own thing but it's still <clears> under the super, guise of a, yeah, of a yeah, franchise agreed. and huh. that's probably why i did it. now sure. if joker was not about the joker like if the joker wasn't in the title and it's about this it wouldn't do as well maybe well I yes mean, it, i agree the name yes. the name helped it the, the name, name really the name helped helps it, it but and it, the fact people said you shouldn't see this movie yeah that's yes. the, and I think I'm going to go see this movie. movie. Yeah. What do you think but we were going to do? Yeah, but to but give then that made me want to go see it more. People yeah. had yeah. to go see it two or three times. So they did, once they got through the door because mm-hmm. of Joker, they liked it. You know, a lot of people that wanted to see it again and again liked it. it I saw it one well, time, I liked it. It was good. Billion dollars. I saw it yeah. two times. I thought it was good. I would say yeah. the two big the, the two big things in it, they're, they're both, I think, loosely related to how you guys were talking about this year in movies, were um, I saw more than you guys did, but I also feel... I think this is one of those years where there's going to be like four or five movies that I really, really, really liked that I hang on to. And then a couple that were extremely disappointing. But overall, it felt like a, a movie heavy in the like B, B plus range. Like there's a lot of those versus mm. a, like a dispersion. Or, that's, like, why, that's why I'm thinking like art <laughs> is starting to come back into the cinema. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it also, yeah, it's. It's where where is what is going to make money, mm-hmm. and I I think uh, a lot of producers still have their fingers on it and yeah. not not allowing directors to be the uh, bringing their art out. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they allow that more often, I think we're going to see a lot more of these popcorn films turning into like the Joker. Yeah, and the- <laughs> you're probably Go- right about that. They're mm-hmm. probably going to take that not take the message the way it's intended but they're 
it's going to be kind of like what happened with YouTube, where you're going to get all of, a bunch of people finding money elsewhere to make films like uh, okay. a Taika Waititi. And then the uh, studios are going to try to compete with that by giving them way more money to do the things they want to do and say, like, just be as crazy as you can. So and that like, just go. go well, out you know, there. it's interesting. Yeah, go ahead. So, you know, it is a studio driven um, system and it's obviously printing money. Nonstop. They're not going to change unless the, the money starts going away. So I don't think it's going to change. That being said, you know, when it was what nineteen late nineteen sixties, nineteen seventies, the studio system before was you know imploding. It was all but dead. And they had this wave of directors mm -hmm. who created The Godfather, Godfather Part Two. Jaws, Star Wars, Godfather Part Three. You know all uh, all these <laughs> Jaws too. All these great franchise. Jaws. Well, the this initial, director driven. Uh, these like, director yeah. director vision. Yeah, the yeah. blockbuster. Yeah, because of these directors, like no one, no one. Like I guarantee you, if Star Wars didn't exist, and today George Lucas would have the same problem. That's not going to make any money. I don't understand that. This doesn't make any sense. Mm. You know what I mean? Laser swords? Yeah. <laughs> so you don't you don't get that risk, but he he made a movie for himself that everybody liked. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I I, I think it's not going to work. I People think everyone's need to franchises. speak their truth in their movies. Well, what I think is is a big change, and this was something that going into the like kind of mid midway through last year, I I made ultimately a pretty stupid statement uh to some people i was talking to uh, that i felt like netflix was gonna was riding really h hard on the irishman They're, like a lot was riding on the irishman being successful because they spent so much money on it mm -hmm. um and it, it got a decent amount of nominations but and i don't foresee it winning many of them we'll get to that on the oscar show but even if it doesn't i think the biggest change this year is is how these streaming companies so amazon also had not as many nominations, but four or five pretty good movies. Hulu's digging into it. I, you know, the streaming companies are the place now where people like the fact that Marriage Story is a Netflix movie. Is and, it? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they're they're you know contracting out these studios that want to work there because of the maybe the creative freedom that yeah. you're talking about. I mean, Six Underground guys, yeah. cinematic <laughs> <mess>. <laughs> But, but they, I, I, I I see what you mean because they didn't really advertise Marriage Story. It just kind of came out on Netflix. Right. It, they kind of saw it as more of oh here's just a movie mm -hmm. on Netflix, and you kind of see and, a trailer here and there, but it's mainly oh this is just a streaming movie. Yeah. But now it's. Yeah, for the Oscars. So it's well, like, and what's interesting of it, there's probably good and bad to this, but the metrics for success are not money driven. They're not a. It's not. It doesn't have to be a blockbuster, right? It there's they have a different criteria for what success looks like for a Netflix movie because of how they do their subscription, how how many views does it get, and all this stuff. So I think it's interesting that that would be my biggest takeaway is not just okay, The Irishman was this big Netflix movie when we did our draft when we did our movie draft thing but it actually has been like a huge broad um uh it's a much more broad field than i expected and i only well, see there's it not continuing. a lot of women in this field so <laughs> but uh, the one yeah. the one uh, yeah, the, the people for little women specifically too the, a huge the, broad. uh based off of what you're saying that's why you i'm really wretch. intrigued to see sonic in a way yes because yes sonic be, i can't because, wait to see it yeah because it's one of the first movies where weeks. they listen to the audience yeah and they they were like okay we'll take it back well they didn't listen so. to me i, I have a, I have a theory about that you. they I want that the i wanted it to be terrible the whole time say again wesley I think the director wanted the original design the whole time, and somebody probably stepped in and said, "No, no, you got to do it like cuter. You got to make it more like Pikachu or whatever." And then the backlash happened, and he's probably like, "So I, I told you." Here's no. Here's another theory. It's the new Coke, the yes. new Coke uh, uh, marketing scheme, where where they made uh, it bad on purpose. So they made a bad Coke on purpose. They got rid of Coca Cola. And they made the new formula, new Coke, and everybody like everybody hated it. Bring back those aren't mutually exclusive. Bring, though. He could have made it. Really bring back bad. classic Correct. Coke, and then classic Coke came back and boom. So it's a conspiracy. What, what I want to 
good one. <laughs> we'll talk about Sonic. <laughs> we'll talk about Sonic more in a little while. Uh, like in my a dun 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 do sound it. didn't work. No, it didn't. Dun, dun, I didn't. Dun, do no. Um, I'm gonna. Well, bring I want to add one more thing that it does feel like this year more than most years. The good stuff was rewarded. Like the good versions of things were rewarded. The yeah. shitty yeah. things failed, and the things that were actually good were either the most talked about. Or the most uh, the mo- the things At that least were controversial, the most. Mm-hmm. and and I think that's a positive thing going forward. It's just it, it, to me, it's probably just the masses getting tired of seeing the same thing with the a new paint more? job. I want to see Sonic over and over and over. Like Shazam, I think is a really great example. Oh yeah, why is that on here? Numbers. They they did something different and gave it. Uh, they injected it. They injected new life into a, a more compelling story than just all right let's do this origin story let's was get that it. made you know, last year in december it. when was that made? No, it's 2019 that was, that was, yeah, yeah that was 2019. all right that's my was number 15 right. movie that's a good one um i gotta look at all the 2019 movies. yeah uh let's go There's ahead like and 130 some odd and oh you saw them half of them <laughs> There's probably more than that, actually. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about just before we get to some of our favorites from the year. Let's talk about, I guess, some of the ones that you went in with maybe higher expectations, and it maybe was more disappointing, or maybe not even a specific film, but there was something from this year that was lacking. I guess. Um, Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> I wasn't disappointed uh, because I knew it was going to be bad. So uh, I expected it to be good but it was not so. eh, you've been subverted again how do you like it yeah <laughs> <laughs> i no i i'm glad you brought that up that was one of my two as well just from a um i mean it's I, just we felt pretty similarly on, yeah right? i just think it was a mess and i don't i mean i don't know if the rest of you guys saw it but uh i, I think, think i think jj just had a big mess on his hands that he had to clean up and he made three films in one well you know yeah. it's interesting I, I saw the um the, just recently the last month or two two weeks or, um ago the colin trevorrow uh, script and mm-hmm. art renderings re- leaked about his third movie it would have been really good really yeah so a lot of it though waited on carrie fisher in, in some parts so they had to rewrite it but there's actually some elements that are still there but it, it didn't. It didn't bring back the emperor at all. First of all, smart. But it was. Wise. But it was a really uh, emotional, driven. Mm-hmm. Um, and and what was nice about it, he even though he probably didn't agree with a lot of the stuff of the Last Jedi, mm-hmm. he um, built on it. He built on. He built on it, mm-hmm. and he actually ha- like like had that kid at the very end make an appearance that you yeah. know one with the, the broom t- so like there's like little things that they uh, they i've read in depth that it leaked and it's like why wouldn't they use this so it does it doesn't seem like just a random third yeah. movie. oh yeah it was it was, it was, was. i did enough and, and, boxes. And, and, and maybe he should have been in charge of all three of them because he obviously knew and then there's also lore that he put in the star wars lore like he obviously respected the source material more so than J.J. Abrams. Well, I felt like J.J. Um, Abrams and Rise of Skywalker was doing a lot of little fan servicey things too, yeah, like a but, lot of little little call outs to yeah. things. You guys remember the Emperor? Read. Well, you know, you <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt and I talked about the Blue Milk the <laughs> rewrite that Jack Thorne did when the movie first came out, and that one built on the Trevorrow script. I got rid of some of the things that were a little extraneous and. Well, the cool thing about the Trevor uh, script, they, they steal a it, Star Destroyer it, at the very beginning. Yeah. That's the very beginning. The heist, they steal a Star Destroyer. Yeah. Which is awesome. You know what I mean? And like, there's some really cool things that they do. And they and they really... And, they, and Rose actually had an important part, even though I don't like that character, but they but they still... Yeah. Uh, Redemption he, arc. Yeah, like he, he, he actually wrote, wrote something to it. Where What should have happened is Ryan Johnson, or Rian, whatever the hell you call him, should have respected J.J. Abrams' setups... And you know, you know, not poo poo on his stuff, and therefore J.J. Abrams wouldn't poo poo on his stuff. Well, you know? I, I think just in general, I've, there's so uh, there's so many different ways to be disappointed in the movie. I know some people liked it, and I think the ones that have pretty much just enjoyed the nostalgia stuff of it, uh, yeah. and that was pretty much it. But I do think there was a big uh, miss there. My other biggest disappointment from the year which i think is kind of controversial was actually the irishman did any of you see the irish i did no i haven't seen what did it. you think what, of it? Well, uh, i would like to know why <laughs> uh, <laughs> just because marty uh likes to 
extend his movies Ex- out to three hours? Extend, but three and a half. I, it ver- <laughs> so I wrote. Whoa. I wrote a. Uh, yeah, I had to uh, have most of my Sunday just watching that film. See, I can't dedicate <laughs> time for another pee break. Right? I'll <laughs> keep it short, but I because I wrote a, a little bit. This is one of the longer reviews I did, but this one, the thing I thought about for the Irishman was. Um, and I think a lot of people, whenever they they reference the movie, is um, they talk about maybe one scene in the middle, a short scene, the one where he's talking about being late or on time, and then they talk about the very end. But you forget that there's three and a half hours of other movie there, and yeah. to mi- to focus on just a couple little things while the rest of it is pretty just standard. And I thought, while technically it's even getting rewarded for a bunch of stuff in here. Um, I felt like it was kind of the well, worst. Well, that's money talking right there. I thought it was the worst, one of the most disappointing editing and um, like less is m- more, like have zero control. It felt like well, they trim put the like fat. two no, I mean, or three takes thing. of the exact same scene yeah. just in the movie it, because it felt like people were repeating the same lines over and over. I was like, why is, why did you already said that? And it, there's one part in the it movie. Did, did it feel like a bad YouTube video where this, the person put this, is, if you watch that, they, they they cut it together and they say the same thing twice. Yes, <laughs> oh, yeah. crap, forgot. That is exactly <laughs> it's already that gone. literally <laughs> happened in the movie. There is a really? it, at like I wrote down the timestamp in my thing, but uh, um, it's when oh Frank my. Robert De Niro's on the phone and he's talking to his daughter, and it's just on him. Yeah, and he's he goes like, "Hey, yeah, it's me," and then you hear his mouth isn't moving, but you hear, "Hey, yeah, it's me." It, because a, a straight audio clip was in there and it was a different line read than what he just said but it was the exact same thing um, and it just was played over top of it and that, to that to me my lucky charms. that to me is reflective of the it was, whole movie it was, a, it was kind of a strange because uh, um, I love Martin Scorsese and I think he does amazing with his films it kind of seemed like I, I, I just feel like he got a lot of money thrown at him mm-hmm. and he's like I gotta make an Air Mafia movie um I like the story of the Irishman. I, mm. I didn't really know a lot of that history, mm. so that was pretty cool. But um, it told a very like a huge story. Jimmy Hoffa, yeah, big, it was just big mystery. Yeah, I I agree with you. I feel like it was a little too long, um, but uh, I feel like the daughter part mm. uh, wasn't really. Um, talked about as much as it seemed like it needed to be because yeah, yeah. later on in the movie towards the end that was a, a big focus right it, but it wasn't during the movie they no. just hinted at it here and there and you're just kind of like okay i don't know why you're focusing so much on this the the biggest thing that i loved about the irishman was the aging of it it yeah, wasn't a it was normal a normal mafia movie for me and that's what i loved about yeah. it so so uh Here's a movie that's a mafia movie that's really long, but you don't care, and you watch it, you're like, crap, I'm sucked in already. As soon as you, it's on, you're like, I'm going to watch it now. Casino. Mm. Casino mm. or Godfather. Yeah. Godfather. Like, Godfather. This one is one where I feel like Godfather. whenever you talk to somebody about it, they turned it off once or twice just to get through it. And I th- it, the way that it's being talked about as best <clears throat> picture, I feel like it. Mm. they're just not even in the same league. No, it, that's and, the, uh, What about visual yeah. effects? We'll talk. Irishman, we'll talk, definitely we'll talk about Irishman. We'll talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. Let's get to our favorites from the year. I feel it was very negative. No, so no, the only that. other thing I would put in there sure. is it chapter two. I oh. I I loved yeah. it. Uh, no, I did really love it, and it was it was my favorite of 2017. That was that was my favorite one. The first movie. The first yeah. one. Same. And uh, chapter two, I liked it, but it had the same issue like the first generation, which was. For some reason, the kids were better than the adults, and mm-hmm. the adults kind of... They felt like they were phoning it in. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I, I'm not... I, Yeah. It, it was... It, the, the plot didn't serve the movie. Right. The plot was fine. It was the pacing that stayed. So really the pacing was a big issue for me. Yeah. I was really disappointed in Dumbo this year. Me oh, too. I forgot about that one. <laughs> that oh, was a big God. one, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I we, had three, we had three, we had three, three Disney live action remakes in the same year. Whew. Aladdin was okay. Yeah. Aladdin was mm. all right. Uh, I was very disappointed with it. Chapter two as well. Yeah, because it, it made me sad. One was, was a hard really, act to follow. Well, yeah. the problem is like they're going to the flashbacks of the little kids. We already did that. 
Just yeah, yeah, them as adults. We, oh, yeah. We don't need to do all that stuff. And there's I, new yeah. stuff, but keep them as adults. Yeah. We don't need to do that. Yeah. We, that, I, was the, that was the, you know. Their whole hideout part, I'm like, if you wanted to hide out, yeah, you should have put that in the first, the first one. one. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's talk about favorites. Uh, Aaron, I can't think of any. Aaron, do you not have a single <laughs> favorite from this year? <laughs> I can't remember any. This was a bad year, man. Oh no! You like Aladdin? I know another conversation. I, we're I gonna liked have. like ten minutes of Aladdin a lot. Godzilla was a fun experience. Godzilla that was, was that was a lot of fun. That was fun. Yeah, I don't that remember it. Though. I probably think the best movie that I liked the most that was like a nice jam, jam we talked about it was Shazam. Mm-hmm. Shazam was pretty oh, good. Yeah, I didn't see that. That was pretty good. Uh, I watched Dirty it. Harry the other day. I really liked that. Does that count? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we did. No, that's a, your 20, uh, 2020 movie. We did, okay. I think, <laughs> 12 or 13 movies this year that, that, were, that new. were new movies. Yeah. We just did them like all at the start of the year. So they're all kind of. Get bad. out of here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look this up. Um, so <laughs> you looked that up. Wesley, what were your favorites yeah. from this year? Do you have a, a list or anything? Yeah, I do. I can. I, I don't think I have a top what is 10. Going I just on? Had no. Some Nothing's movies good. I liked. Um, <laughs> and the two that I saw last were my two, not two favorites, but um, the last one I saw was 1917, which came in and just swooped into the number one spot with mm-hmm. no, uh, just undisputed. Uh, I saw Parasite 2 a few days before that. Hell yeah. Which which was very good. Uh, but outside of that, the ones that I really enjoyed this year were Knives Out, Jojo Rabbit, The Lighthouse, Doctor Sleep, uh, Endgame, and Shazam. Nice. That's yeah, funny because I, I heard Doctor Sleep was not doing well. It did not do well, but it was very good. I heard oh. Doctor Sleep was also very good, though. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't yeah, get a, really I good. didn't get a chance to see that one. I didn't either. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of overlap with yours. Uh, Wesley. It's funny because the front end, I saw more movies in the back, and I haven't seen anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's where all the good uh, movies are. Claws, claws, claws is all right. Yeah. Claws is all right. We saw Claws. We did Lion King. We did claws. Lion King. I didn't even see it though. We did Detective <laughs> Pikachu. Hell yeah. That was pretty good, actually. Yeah. Detective Pikachu was pretty good. It was all right. It was decent. It was all right. Yeah. Sorry. I really uh, like the world that they put it in because you could get that in the game too. Yeah, we did Glass, great. Mary Poppins. Wait, that's no, 2018. That was last year. We I'm, did I'm dipping over. Glass, Dumbo, Extremely Us. Wicked. Extremely Us. Wicked sucked. Uh, yeah, Captain Marvel. Um, uh, Colin. <laughs> yeah. What are your top movies from the year? So I um. Dark Phoenix. Right. Well, my my top one <laughs> is The Lighthouse. <laughs> Um, the Lighthouse was oh, yeah. my favorite movie this year. Um, I don't think it's going to be a winning very much. Uh, if it only any, got nominated for one thing: yeah, cinematography. It's, it's, it's not, which is crazy. Yeah. Well, it so, might win it though. It, 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 it might really good. Not with nineteen seventeen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. It, it like for me, that movie sticks in my brain, <laughs> and know. I gotta I gotta rewatch it mm-hmm. a couple times. I ended up buying it on Amazon mm-hmm. uh, streaming, so I can watch it a couple times, but. Uh, Parasite is my number two. Um, that's another one that. What is that sticks about? Everybody's talking about that. It's about a poor family. It's about these two sites and a uh, rich family, and that's <laughs> that's pretty much how I want to put it because it's it's the flow of the movie that really gets you. Mm-hmm. Is with there a Parasite, parasite in it? Uh, you gotta watch it. Metaphorical. It's, it, yeah, it's metaphorical, but it's like oh. it's it's very much like a. Okay, I thought it was a horror movie. No. no, well, no. not was, really. I would say thrill, thriller, maybe drama yeah. thriller. Yeah, yeah, a comedic, comedic Dark drama comedy. thriller yeah. with <laughs> maybe like fifteen minutes of horror. So there's a movie yeah. that came out this recently. I think <laughs> sort of like called, Little Shop of Horrors called Underwater. Yeah. Underwater, something like that. Yeah, yeah. the was, Kristen Stewart aliens yeah. oh. at the bottom of the ocean. It's a yeah, copy yeah. of Leviathan. Huh. Then, Leviathan. Yeah, we. <laughs> We did this already. No, we're gonna do it again. So, so, <laughs> have you ever seen Leviathan? <laughs> <laughs> I, I kn- it came out at the same time as the Abyss. Oh, it no, did. No, no, yeah. no, no, I was no. too busy watching the Abyss. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 nobody watched the Abyss apparently. In what? That year. Yeah, Abyss is great. Yeah, Abyss really is well. great. No, yeah, it is great. It. No, no, Abyss is better. But, but it's always. It, but it has um, it Peter stands, Weller, right? Yeah, that- Peter Weller and Stan Stan Winston monster he created. So Ooh. that's awesome. Yeah. Anyways, it's big sea aliens that are watching. But they, but they copied <laughs> I love it. it. Yeah, they copied. that's a, so you've you've now. Can said I put that down for twenty nineteen? You said Sonic and underwater. 
which are both 20, 20 movies. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see both of those. Yeah, I, know. I also want to see... Um, I'm going to hold you to this. So when at the end of next year, when you're like, I didn't want to see anything, I'm going to be like, remember those two movies? Remember you know? Sonic? But I want to see those stupid movies. Okay, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I don't want to see any of these I've garbage. told you before, Sonic is going to save cinema. I, I'm looking forward to Sonic. Let's <laughs> so let Colin fast. finish his list. So oh, you, it, you it, like uh, Lighthouse so, Night and Parasite. Parasite and... Um, one that came out of nowhere that I ended up loving so much is uh, One Cut of the Dead. And that movie shocked me how much I love that film. Uh, so my, uh, so those are my top three. Mm-hmm. And two of them are international films. Mm-hmm. So it really makes me wonder what American cinema is going to be like. I mean, we had that big conversation but it seems like the foreign films are the ones that I'm liking more. So, and there's a bunch that uh, from the, I know Pain and Glory didn't get nominated, but it's on, it was a big movie this year. And yeah. then also there was a movie called Portrait of a Lady on Fire that I I didn't see, but that's like a French movie that also was apparently amazing. Hmm. So, I I think you're right. At least they're getting more notoriety given, especially given Parasites. And kind of, nominated. I can just go down the list. Yeah, was finish the, off your list. Four was Marriage Story. Um, five was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Six was Joker. Seven um, was Always Be My Maybe. And I don't know if you guys ended up watching what that. What is that? It was on Netflix, and it's an Asian film, an Asian-American film. Um, and it's a comedy, but it's about two friends that end up falling in love kind of thing. But mm. it's it has two comedians, and it's actually pretty funny. Oh, cool. and it, it it's, it's a good one. It just uh, wasn't promoted that much this year midsummer uh and it was number nine and then star wars and star wars is on there just because i i ended up not watching that many movies this year so that that's why it's on there cool uh so the two that did were just on the edge of my top 10 were uh uncut gems mm. the adam sandler movie i heard that's good heard that it's pretty ridiculous i haven't had a chance to watch it yeah and then dolomite is my name was my number 11 <laughs> which i really liked <laughs> which um, is bringing back eddie murphy he's gonna have yeah. his own stand-up come out this year i think well, he's, when, he's, when he's gonna pluto be in Nash a too he's gonna be in a ton of stuff this upcoming year yeah hopefully pluto Nash norbit too after. anyone no, you know what i wanted to see this year that i didn't get a chance to see was alita i heard that was really good battle angel mm-hmm. yeah. I heard that was really good that did that get not or did that get snubbed uh, i think it got snubbed oh wow that's yeah. crazy yeah um or that was pretty good. So let's see if I even seen ten movies this year. I'm I, I enjoyed going. Godzilla, uh, Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Captain Marvel. I, I saw. So that's what three. Sam, right? Sam, four. You saw at least thirteen. I know that much. So from what the are, podcast, really? What yeah. did we see? You know, like Endgame, or yeah, we did Endgame. Yeah, Endgame, did... I guess. That would mean that I saw ten because I skipped Captain Marvel, Shazam, and Endgame. I I, <laughs> I, I skipped a Lion King, right? Yeah, and I lied it. the whole time. You did. <laughs> so here's well, my top like you ten. Hadn't seen I'm it. gonna just go in reverse order. So number ten, Little Women. Number nine, Frozen Two. Number eight, Parasite. Number seven, 1917. Ooh, yeah. Number six, Avengers: Endgame. Number five, Jojo Rabbit. Number four, Joker. Number three, Marriage Story. Uh, number two, one we haven't talked about yet, is Ad Astra. Did any of you see that? No, no but I saw the ad for Ad Astra. Hey. Yeah. But this is where we need the sound <laughs> uh, effects. Hey, uh, uh, uh. Oh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> number so at Astra, uh, I mean, we, we, we'll talk about some of the other movies a little bit more on the Oscars That's thing. But two at Astra, I don't, th- I think it got one nomination. It's my second favorite. It's and not it's, a good name. It sounds like you're stuttering every time you say it. <laughs> at Astra, Astra, it's uh, Brad Pitt, very, very uh, kind of Moby Dick type story. Yeah. But he's very like it's kind of one of those emotional uh, descent. Like he's very like yeah. soldiery. Like this is I'm this is mechanical. This is what just what I have to do to get to my dad, who's on Neptune and whatever. Yeah, it's sci-fi, right? And yeah, yeah okay. and he and his slowly his just his emotions break down, and that gets to him like because he's put up all these walls around him. It's really good. Um, I'm I actually think it's a much better performance that he did in Ad Astra than uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood Ooh. this year. Is he not um, like for both? 
No, no. Uh, just for just once for upon once upon a time, he's probably going to win too. My number one movie, uh, I Wesley mentioned it, but I agree with Colin is easily the Lighthouse. Um, it it's the only one I gave a ten this year, and it um, you know compared to even the other ones on the list, this is why I started with like it felt like a. If you were to argue with me that some of these were these are a lot of like low nine out of tens for me, uh, and then the Lighthouse is just clearly superior there's so many things that it has going for it um that i could not recommend seeing that one that's why enough. that's why i'm like art is sort of slipping in there mm-hmm. a little bit in the cinema again which i hope it happens more and more i i was shocked about it because it is so artistic with its shots the performances um i mean i read about how Robert Pattinson almost punched the director because of uh, the conditions that they were under. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I believe and, it. And uh, for the people that have seen it, uh, I keep on it, – it, it's rattling in my brain so much. Mm-hmm. Was Willem Dafoe really there? <laughs> you ruined the whole movie for me. No, no, no. It, it, it no, won't ruin anything. It doesn't ruin anything. It doesn't ruin anything. <laughs> It's it's purely speculative what he yeah, just yeah. said. It, what there's said no so, there's like, no spoiler or anything. It's just no. a theory about it. That's that, what but I, I think that speaks to just how psychologically like I got I think I texted you guys like immediately after watching it that I got so much Kubrick shining kind of feel to mm-hmm. it. There's, there's obviously differences, but I definitely just how it see that messes movie. with your head I actually a little thought bit. It looked amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't ruin anything. It, like that's the reason why I ask it because I I don't it, it, it keeps on it's in my head so much like I just don't Willem Dafoe does such an amazing job in it they both do you I know one of the things that's super impressive too. about it is it's so close to being pretentious but it isn't huh. like it it, like it, it walks that line so well like <laughs> there are <laughs> yeah it walks so much the line. <laughs> it, like with the farts and the entire monologue there's a monologue that one of the characters has about food and it's one of the most amazing things yeah. I've ever seen in any movie ever. So Spider-Man. it doesn't it doesn't think it's it doesn't uh treat itself like it's what a lot of people look at it and think it is. Mm-hmm. It treats itself very grounded while still being this really out there um kind of parable of it, it's sort of like a Greek tragedy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would like agree with that. It got a lot of like uh Greek mythology in there mm-hmm. like the very well, the very well, end of the movie I don't want to spoil it but it is a recreation of a Greek myth. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, um is it is it the um, the Greek myth of um, Icarus? No. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so did, was Robert Patterson's uh, name uh, the character's name Virginia the whole time? Because <laughs> was willing to focus on. You just said it yourself. <laughs> The genius. <laughs> elaborate. Elaborate way and to again, say it. Again, and again and again, we got to put the lighthouse on. Well, uh, I, I kept on thinking the whole time when I was watching, I was like, hey, Batman and the Green Goblin are uh, yeah. like, yeah. hanging, <laughs> hanging out. out with each other. Sleeps, Batman. I would say Impressive. the bit, so if I were to say, Impressive. to tie it to the overall again, I would say my favorite thing was the lighthouse maybe one of my biggest disappointments is also that the lighthouse isn't recognized at all uh even in any of the award shows but i also think this is a weird trend where in the movie industry horror is the one thing that seems to be like on the ri- like very obviously on the rise both from a blockbuster standpoint but also on the like but art house standpoint horror, okay so let me tell you about horror i'm gonna tell you right now about horror. it's scary no, no, hor- horror is um, always popular. It's always popular. And if you're a young director and you look at the trends, a lot of young directors do horror movies to break in to movies because you know it can make money. So Correct. horror is always, and like, like suspense, thrillers, those but, are always the, probably the most popular movies all the time. Outside of chick flicks. Well, but I did, what I guess I, oh, he was, what I don't understand is that you know, this is now two years in a row where I felt like last year, Tony Collette, Hereditary, was, or was that, was that two, two years, years ago? ago? Two years yeah. ago. Hereditary, two years ago, was such a, and, and that was the same year garbage. as a Quiet Place. No, it wasn't. Get out of here. Acts one and two were good. Hereditary, Quiet Place, we have these, like, 
they kind of transcend just mm-hmm. simple horror. Then now we're getting to a place where the lighthouse, which I feel like is even better than those, and it just feels dismissed, completely dismissed well, yeah, from a broader I actually, standpoint. I also think too. So that's your favorite movie, right? Remember two years ago, or was it last year? I can't remember. That our favorite movie, all of us, I think, collectively uh, agreed that Blade Runner twenty forty nine was the best movie. Yeah, it was that year that didn't get nominated for best picture. Well, uh, yeah, it, it beat it out for me just uh, just a tiny bit because Blade Runner was so amazing. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry, it was really say that amazing. again. What did you? What fudge you? <laughs> what fudge you? No <laughs> language, Ben. <laughs> no, but but my my point being is you know. The best movies, you know, are not always the best pictures. Well, that's, that's well, but even in the other categories, I guess it is what's surprising to me. But it, yeah, I thought um, it was going to be nominated for um, best Willem Dafoe. <laughs> <laughs> it was Willem impressive. Dafoe. Well, uh, any Dafoe. Yeah. Any other kind of final thoughts from this year in movies before we kind of transition over? Better than last year. I am mad that Sonic got pushed back. I do have to say that I did watch... Ben, where'd you go? I'm nowhere. I'm everywhere, and I'm nowhere. Pay no mind. I will finish. I I think think you got to push the plug in. I think the plug is loose. Carry on. I am everywhere. I am omnipresent. Um, Good. I think uh, last... uh, I think... I did see, and I enjoyed, was uh, The Mandalorian. I thought that was good. <laughs> it wasn't a, a movie. Standpoint. But I'm saying, like, that's why yeah. I, I, if something new that I watched was that. Huh. Oh, there we uh, Wesley, it's anything, any other final thoughts for you from the year? Yeah, I, I, I just would want to reiterate what I said earlier, is I think that this year was a good sign um, of going forward because of the things that did um that that did find success things like joker hopefully that doesn't translate to just studios throwing um some money at dark versions of of whatever Mm -hmm. um and they actually give somebody who has something to say uh not a platform but uh give them an opportunity to do something i think that uh 2019 even though it started in 2018 2019 was sort of this explosion of taika watiti and i think Mm -hmm. that He's he, gonna sort of go. He was involved with Spielberg route. Mandalorian a lot. Like he directed yeah. some episodes. He was even a voice in it. So he's involved yeah. with the Mandalorian series. Mm-hmm. And like he's huh. attached to a bunch of other things. I think he's gonna go a Steven Spielberg route, where it's not necessarily him making every movie he's attached to, but he's going to give those opportunities to people he sees potential in, yep. and he'll just have he'll have these like branches coming off of him of this, you know, of not necessarily all his style. But some, he's obviously shown he has, um, a, like has good taste, um, and hopefully, you know, he adds. Didn't he, he direct an episode of Flight of the Concord? Stories. He did several of them. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's from. Uh, um, my only thing is like, based off of what uh, Wesley's saying, is uh, it it shows if you give a director a chance to show what he's trying to say in a in a movie or a TV show, you're, you're going to get good stuff out of it. And if, uh, production companies give, give that out more, I think Mm -hmm. we're going to see better stuff. Yeah. Instead of being scared and just editing the crap out of it. Yeah. And I think it, you know, there's a bunch of justice league. I think my biggest, you know, this year there was a, there were a lot of movies that felt like maybe not the best work yet from a certain, you know, director or writer. Um, but that's also encouraging to me that now I know a, a lot of new um, kind of new names and I'm excited to see what they do next. Like the, you know, Another Uncut Gems. Another example is Jordan Peele. Y- yeah. I think I agree. Get Out was like pretty he's good. Not doing, he's not doing Candyman, but he's found somebody. Um, also, uh, Creed 2 was the same kind of thing. Like Ryan was Coogler it? is this massive thing but he picked handpicked somebody to direct the next creed and no, that was Matt, also very good that was one of my disappointments after get out us was like really not that great i i still had it not i didn't like have it fall down my list all, all that much but it is it worse. was hyped up it for is, me. it was it was not as good i i would agree with you mm. but um anyway we'll uh we're going to continue this week uh cuz we're going to ha- we're going to have posts you know Tuesday through Friday, essentially. Oh, yes. Um, so we're going to, uh, 
I guess go follow all of our social media and our YouTube just to see what uh, new stuff we've got uh, for a year in review, ending with our Oscars picks later this week. So okay, check that out. And these guys will be back on. So these guys, these guys, everybody here. Wow, it's not like we're gonna film it back to back. 